On day two of the UN Climate Summit in Egypt, much of the talk revolved around the Climate Fund. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres had a stark warning for world leaders. He said that the loss and damage from the climate crisis can no longer be swept under the rug. Welcome to Beyond's Climate Tracker. My name is Priyanka Sharma. As the planet struggles with the climate emergency, the United Nations unveiled a five-year plan to build a global early warning system for extreme weather events. The plan is worth $3.1 billion. The UN chief says that it is a small price to pay for saving thousands of lives. The UN chief has also called for a clear roadmap to address the issue for nations being battered by devastating impacts of climate change. He said that the world is on a highway to climate hell. And the choice is between working together or collective suicide in the battle against global warming. The clock is ticking. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. Greenhouse gas emissions keep growing. Global temperatures keep rising. And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. The British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said that the Russia-Ukraine war and rising energy prices should not be a reason to go slow on climate goals. He emphasized that world leaders must act quickly to address the impacts of climate change. But I can tell you today that the United Kingdom is delivering on our commitment of £11.6 billion. And as part of this, we will now triple our funding on adaptation to £1.5 billion by 2025. French President Emmanuel Macron also seemed to have similar views. He said that countries should not step backwards in terms of energy sources because of the war and should continue to make efforts to achieve climate goals. The second day of COP27 hit a milestone as funding for loss and damage has made it to the agenda of the climate summit for the first time. Germany and Belgium have committed to contribute to the funding. Chancellor Olaf Scholz announced that Germany is putting $170 million into a global shield program, which will offer insurance schemes for the vulnerable nations. We will provide targeted support to the countries most affected by climate change in dealing with loss and damage. At G7 Presidency, we want to set up a global shield against climate risks together with the vulnerable 20. Germany will make 170 million euros available for this umbrella and for climate risk financing. The issue of deforestation was also discussed at the climate summit. More than 25 countries that account for 35% of the world's forests have launched the Forest and Climate Leaders Partnership. The pact aims to halt and reverse forest loss and land degradation by 2030. However, such promises are not new as more than 140 countries have pledged to end deforestation by 2030 and this was way back in COP26. It was praised as one of the big announcements from last year's summit but little was done to meet this target. Meanwhile, India's Environment Minister Bhupendra Yadav voiced support for the UN Secretary General's agenda to issue early warnings for all. Climate finance is still a mirage. And effective climate adaptation, such as early warning for all, help us collectively in our region toward reducing vulnerabilities and ensuring preparedness and swift and timely response to, nat to natural hazards. And for more on this, we are now being joined by Matt Disney, who is a professor at the National Centre for Earth Observation in the UK. He joins us from London. Matt, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you very much. According to you, what are the biggest takeaways so far at COP27? The most controversial issue continues to be the loss and damage fund. Well, I think the, the focus on forests yesterday was, was very interesting and, and, and very much needed. Um, there's, you know, there's the, whether anything is going to be done about this and what the concrete financial implications of this um, announcement are, are yet to be seen, as with so many of these things. So the, the fact that forests are being put front and centre in the agenda, you know, we know that forests are extremely important, but this kind of um, structural commitment to reducing and uh, reversing deforestation, I think, 
think is is a bit of a step change in the language that, that we've seen at COP. Um, again, where is the money? Show us the money. Um, you know, how is this going to be funded already there? You know, some of the, re- the reactions from people in the UK, for example, to Rishi Sunak's announcement ab- about the leadership of this is, um, is this going to be new money um, that is going to be contributed by countries like the UK, or is this going to be repackaged money? Those those are the questions that people are asking already. But it's interesting to see it so importantly front and centre at the moment. Right, Matt, uh, you're joining us from London. What do you make of Rishi Sunak's presence at COP27, especially after his initial refusal to attend the event given domestic priorities? Um, mixed feelings. I mean, I'm glad he's there in the end. Uh, but the fact that he was essentially almost forced to by, um, you know, kind of public and political opinion uh, is not a good look. Um, the fact that you're turning up, you know, for a day here or there and then dashing in and out of meetings does not make it look as if you're really serious about committing to this. And I think it would have sent a better message had he said right from the outset, look, we, you know, this is really, really extremely important. And regardless of domestic issues and, um, you know, financial issues and recent upheavals in, in UK politics, this is bigger than all of that. And therefore, it, you know, it, it's really important that I turn up and I represent, um, you know, the, the UK at these, at these talks. So, you know, I'm glad he went, as I say, uh, and I'm glad he is making key announcements about things like the, the Forest and Climate Leaders Partnership. But um, it, it shows to me uh, some uh, naivety or a lack of judgment um, and, you know, being unsure in his own position within his own party um, to, to not have made that decision. I ha- essentially have it made for him by Boris Johnson announcing that he was going to rock up at COP27. Right. Matt, my next question, the final one, is uh, to talk about the broader picture here. You know, climate crisis and the resolution thereafter may be making headlines all the way from Egypt. But the world at the moment is focused on different issues. There's a war in Europe. There's inflation across the world. Job cuts being reported left, right and center. Is there any appetite for climate-related news at this point? Or even for that matter, climate-related action? Does the world really care, given how the cost of living crisis and inflation and the economic turmoil has taken centre stage globally. Um, at the risk of not wanting to answer for the world, um, uh, yeah, and for my for my my own perspective, I think yes, that, that you know there is and there has to be because these things are not unconnected. Uh, you know the idea that um, the climate crisis is unconnected from um, you know economic situations and uh, and war and conflict between nations more generally is is just not the case these things are all interconnected and so you know whether we like it or not we have to be focused on these things i you know i understand that one thing at a time and sometimes it feels overwhelming in the, the nature of the kind of problem we're talking about in the climate emergency but to divorce it from these other topics is just um it is you know it's not the way it works these things are all interconnected and the climate emergency is going to make all of these problems more difficult it's going to make all of these things more difficult so you have to deal with this in amongst everything else because if you don't and you put it to one side and assume it's a different problem you'll fail to address any of the problems right matt thank you so much for all those inputs and thanks for joining us on beyond this hour no problem thank you beyond world is one is now available in your country download the app now and get all the news updates on the move